Australia's second largest city, Melbourne, plays host to the Pacific Rim Gymnastics Championships. The 2010 edition falls two years after Beijing's Olympics and two years before those in London. A chance for stars to measure their staying power and emerging threats to test themselves on a global stage. The baby of the Beijing team is now the leader of this one. Bridget Sloan headlines a U.S. squad stacked with teenage talent, including Rebecca Bros, the teammate she defeated for the 2009 world title. The Americans take on China's next wave of able acrobats and an upstart team of challengers from down under. At the halfway point between Olympic Games, each event is an opportunity and every impression matters. Welcome you to the 2010 edition of the Pacific Rim Gymnastics Championships inside High Sense Arena. It's the 12th edition of this event, which takes place every two years and brings together teams representing nations that line the Pacific Coast, along with Elfie Schlegel and Tim Daggett. I'm Terry Gannon. Three Americans making up the senior edition of this team and three juniors from Marta Caroli and uh, facing teams from Australia, from Canada, China, always one to look out for, Tim. No question about it. And although the Chinese are not well known, these young athletes are phenomenal. And I guarantee you, Team America is going to go home from this competition, regardless of how it turns out, a little bit nervous. For more on the Americans and what they face, here's Andrea Joyce. This is a very strong U.S. team here in Melbourne, but they won't be operating at full strength, and that's because 2009 World All-Around Champion Bridget Sloan tweaked her right ankle during vault training the day the Americans left for Australia. Not a serious injury, but just to be safe, she will only compete on the uneven bars. Bridget told me the biggest challenge was the actual trip itself, traveling from Houston to L.A. to Sydney to Melbourne. She had to continually ice her ankle and keep it elevated the entire time, but she knew it was important for her her to be here at the ripe old age of 17 she is the seasoned veteran and really the leader of this young squad it's a role she takes very seriously so you can expect to see Bridget Sloan making a big physical presence on the sidelines throughout this entire competition all right Andrea thank you and uh, up first from Canada on the vault Dominique Pegg the 16 year old from Sarnia Ontario and the 2009 Canadian all-around bronze medalist. And Dominique really represents the future of Canadian gymnastics. This is a very important event for this Canadian team. And a really good start. Very nice form, a lot of power on that. I love this. She said that her older brother was a gymnast and she had to do everything that he did. Now from China on the uneven bars, Tan Si Xin, just 15 years of age and appearing to be 15 <laughs> every bit of it. And one of the juniors and really, you know, Terry, you said this is the halfway mark, and I think for China, this is a testing ground for these very young gymnasts to see how they handle this kind of pressure. And I'll tell you, she is phenomenal. Look at the perfect handstands extended. Look at those toes. Already has a very good grasp of the technical component of the sport. It's just how do you handle the stage? Well, the thing that's amazing to me is how she handles a routine that's this long and hard. Some really big gymnastics, great amplitude, and some of the hardest things for her to do on this event is just the transitions from there to there. That's a long way away. But like I said, a jam-packed routine. Oh, that'll cost her a point off. Disappointing finish for Tan Si Sheen, the 15-year-old from China. We're underway in Melbourne. Back in Melbourne for the Pacific Rim Gymnastics Championships and getting set on the bars, Wang Shu Shuang, the 17-year-old from Hubei, China. Tan Si Sheen, her mark, 13.2. That tough finish just a moment ago. But here is Shu Shuang. And once again, you'll see why I had mentioned at the top of the show that USA might have some concerns because bars was really the event that the Chinese used to defeat the Olympic team in 2008. And she is another 
phenomenal bar worker. Look at this. Traditional Chinese lines, great extension, big skills. This is what makes them so great. Watch this. Oh, just gorgeous. By the way, the format for this event, there are 16 members, five of them compete in each individual event and only four of the scores count, so you throw out the low score. China already wants to throw out that first bar routine, but they will not be throwing this one out. Lovely. Fantastic. Wong Shu Swong, as we get a look at some of those, which will be prominent in London in 2012. First look at the floor exercise, and from Australia, the 15-year-old from right here in Melbourne, Georgia Wheeler. And again, the future of Australian gymnastics, first-year senior. Oh, you see that she hopped out of bounds. That'll be three-tenths of a point. Wheeler, the 2009 silver medalist from the Australian Junior National Championships. Australia, not unlike China, with a contingent here of very young but talented gymnasts. They are actually missing their star, Lauren Mitchell, who won two World Championships medals at the last World. She is down with an injury. Fourth place in the all around. Another. <laughs> Once again, both feet out, a, t a tenth of a point if one foot goes out of bounds, three if both land out. So she has got mm, six tenths of a point right off the bat. They're called neutral deductions. Well, she's just coming off an injury. They said they were going a little cautious with her routines. Perhaps she's just not feeling the tumbling right at this point in time. Australia team that's made strides, though, in recent years under Peggy Lydic, uh, the American. Now you see the number for Wong Shu Shuang. 15.10 on the uneven bars. Big, big number. And the Americans getting set, currently with a bye, so uh, yet to get their effort underway here in Melbourne. And meanwhile, the 15-year-old from China, Wu Lu Fong, getting set on the bars. I think you come to this, and, and everyone kind of learning some of the names that we will uh, know a lot about over the next two years. Yeah, I mean, these are virtually unknown, these gymnasts. They've competed, you know, occasionally, internationally, and, of course, in China, but... And there are so many more like them still back home. And what's an interesting is later this year are the World Championships, a team event, and I wouldn't be surprised if we did see some of these athletes on this team. But not all of them. And not all of them. Is that part and parcel of the approach that China takes oftentimes of they, working up towards the Olympic Games? It is no question about it. And uh, they really revamped the strategy of a lot of teams because beautiful release there. But gymnastics is a reputation sport. And so every time the USA goes out on the floor, another great routine, another great routine. Marta Corley wants them to not just win, but to dominate. The Chinese feel that it doesn't matter. And sometimes they go to an event, and to be perfectly honest, the athletes are not as prepared as they could be, and it's a learning experience for them. Meanwhile, Georgia Wheeler from Australia, some mistakes in that floor exercise and a score of 12.15. And that's unfortunate because now they're forced to count to score from a junior athlete that was 12.9. Very low, bad start. All right, for Canada now on vault, the 16-year-old Brittany Rogers, who came in seventh in this uh, back in the World Championships in 2009. In fact, she was the only one from Canada to qualify for an individual event final. Well, she is a veteran of this team. She says she still needs to become physically and mentally tougher at these types of competitions. So her teammate, Dominique Pegg, earlier, she received 14.15 on the vault. 
And Wu Lu Fong, the bar score 14.5. I actually think it might be a little bit low. They were a little bit tough on her, had over two points in deductions on that exercise. The Americans getting set. We'll see them next when we come back to the Pacific Rim Gymnastics Championships here in Melbourne. Pacific Rim Championships are brought to you by Tyson Chicken Nuggets, made with 100% all-natural ingredients. By Franklin Templeton Investments, gained from our perspective. And by AT&T, we think possible. Chance for the young American athletes to see the world. Here they are in Melbourne, set to go after that opening bye. Now, after the first rotation, China on top. Canada just behind Australia, of course, with some mistakes on the floor exercise. So the Americans uh, just about ready to go. Terry Gannon along with Elfie Schlegel and Tim Daggett, the Chinese team, getting set for the beam. And they can be great there. And I'll tell you, these routines that we're about to see are jam-packed with difficulty. The U.S. will start on the vault. And, you know, I think this is probably the strongest vaulting team I've ever seen put on the floor by Team USA. And here's China now on the beam. Zhang Tong, 16 years of age. I think what the Chinese have proven over the years on balance beam is fluidity, uh, along with great acrobatic skills, of course, but a great mindset for this apparatus, which is crucial when you're up on a podium and working on a four-inch balance beam. And that big acro skill right here, front with a half. And that is disastrous. Right there, whenever you fall on any apparatus now, it used to forever be five-tenths of a point, now a full point off. So China is going to want to be able to toss this routine out right off the bat. And the difficulty, of course, today with the new rules is whatever you decide to do in terms of acrobatic skills, you better be awfully sure that you're doing it well because a full point really throws you out of a competition. We hear coaches talk about how difficult it is now under the code of points system. What, what specifically has made it so difficult? Well, basically what it comes down to is the more you do, the harder the elements that you do, the higher potential score. But every time you do one of these, like she's going to do another acrobatic skill right here, every time you do that, that's a huge risk. And so it's, it comes down to risk in return. But of course, the routines that we remember at this stage of competition are the routines that have risk. Those are the memorable routines. You want athletes to do something just a little bit different. A little bit low on that landing, but great routine except for that fall. Now, Rebecca Bross, the 16-year-old from Plano, Texas, the silver medalist from the World Championships last year. She was edged out by Bridget Sloan, and she's had a great season so far this year. Big vault, the American Cup champion. Well, a good job. Actually, a little bit sloppy in the air. Could be a bit tighter. But one of her greatest gifts in this sport is how she approaches competition and how she handles competition. She's very aggressive. She's not afraid of her routines. You see that foot staying inside that yellow or orange area if it steps out. Of course, an additional deduction. 15.05 the score, though. It's, it's a good score. Good score, but I think we can see a little stronger from some of the other Americans. Zhang Tong for the beam, 13.15, and as you mentioned, they'd love to be able to throw that out. Yeah, they can't afford another score like that. Wulu Fong getting set, the 15-year-old for China. They've had their problems already, China has. On the beam. A little bit earlier, Wong Shu Swong. Watch what happens here. Not so good. <laughs> this has been a disastrous beam effort so far for the Chinese. But remember, for this team, unknowns, they're here to test the waters. They're trying to figure out how they're handling this level of competition and their skills. So they have a long way to go. Right, second apparatus now, second effort for Wu Lu Fong. Already on. The bars now on the beam. And they cannot afford any more mistakes. That last routine had two major falls in it. 
already off the top. Some beautiful work showing great flexibility. Any time that you lose sight of the beam, you can rest assured that that's a very risky element. But this is what balance beam is made up of combinations such as this. And that one right there, she will not get. She's supposed to keep moving from that first acrobatic skill into those next two. She loses some combination points there. Yeah, that was solid. You know, we've seen the falls so far from China on beam, but I'll tell you, they are just exquisite. Everything that they do, the body positions. Yeah, they have, they have the qualities of being exceptional athletes. And again, along with that, having this type of routine, you need to be able to compete it over and over again at high-end competitions. So it's the consistency, that's what they're working on. There's a double pike dismount. That was a great routine. Yeah, pretty gymnastics, very pretty. So they couldn't afford any more mistakes, and Wulu Fong, a solid effort on the beam for China here. All right, first look at one of the young juniors from the U.S., Jordan Weber, just 14 years of age from DeWitt, Michigan. And she has not competed for 14 months since she won the Tyson American Cup in 2009. Had a pulled hamstring, rested it for eight months. You'd never know it. And beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. And you know, Jordan, because of her age, is actually competing as a junior here. And the junior rules for the athletes, she's actually capable of doing a much more difficult vault, a two and a half twist. She's not even allowed to do it because of the junior rules. 14.85 for Wulu Fong from China on beam. And a congratulatory hug already for Jordan Weber celebrating the 15.10 score on vault. Some breaking news while this event's taking place. China, which captured the bronze medal back in 2000 at the Sydney Olympics, stripped of its medal because Dong Feng Xiao was not 16 years of age. That's the age limit. Guys, what are your thoughts? Well, first of all, what that meant is the USA team comes home with a bronze medal, and I believe they'll be awarded that later in the summer. And, of course, we were there in Sydney watching the performances. And, you know, for the American team, they were not thrilled with how they competed. So this will be nice for them to come away with a medal eventually. Here's the reaction from team coordinator Marta Caroli. Finally, justice was done, and it was due for a long time. And I'm so happy for the reason that the world will be aware and that the other countries will respect the rules just like we respecting in USA. And meanwhile, the youthful image of Tansi Sheen, the 15-year-old. We don't have the age limit <laughs> here at the uh, Pacific Rim Championships. She is a junior here. And to be perfectly honest, I could care less how old she is because when you see what she's capable of doing on balance beam, it is it, it's spellbinding. She's exceptional, and she already gets it at age 15. Remember the mistakes that fall so far for the Chinese on the beam? Now watch this pass. It is fabulous. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's big time gymnastics. That's, that right there, that piece of gymnastics cannot be done any better than that. But, oh. And that's experience right there. A simple skill for her, although there was risk added when she threw her head back, but that is just going to take time. Events like this. So what is that? Four falls, five falls. Mm. Yikes. Five points off. Really not anywhere near as difficult as that first tumbling run she did, a simple front flip. Mm. Is it the pressure of a major international event, some here for the first time, or what? I really don't think it's pressure for, for these girls. I just, I just think that they're not ready yet. And, you know, the coaches, they'll be angry, but I really believe that the Chinese fundamentally have a very different philosophy 
than the rest of the countries around the world. They just think that, you know, it's okay. She's a young girl, and look at what she can do when she perfects it. They're going to beat everyone. That's what they're thinking. All the acrobatic skills were not a problem. It was the simple skills. So from the 15-year-old, Tom C. Sheen, <laughs> the look yeah. on her face kind of <laughs> tells it all, doesn't it? Well, she's done it a million times perfectly. You can be sure of that. Even younger, 14-year-old Jordan Weber cheering on her teammate, Alexandra Raceman. Allie Raceman, 15 years of age, from Needham, Massachusetts. We got a chance to watch her gymnastics at the American Cup earlier this year. Fantastic. She was second there. This has been quite a year for her. And this is a great event for Allie. And that's what she does so well. Look at that landing. It's, it's like effortless. Many of the gymnasts struggle when they hit the ground like that to maintain composure and, and they look a little bit rattled, but she lands great. Well, big time start for the U.S. so far. A couple of vault efforts and very good ones. Now to Canada and Brittany Rogers set to go on bars. Brittany started off the competition on vault. We watched that. Not as difficult as some of the vaults that we have been seeing in this competition, but this is a very good event for her. As I mentioned earlier, she said she needs to become mentally tougher in competition, but the Canadians are looking at her to lead this team. Actually, it's a very difficult exercise. High start value. Elfie, where is Canada right now in your estimation? Mm, they're having a, a revamping time right now with young juniors coming on the scene and uh, not where they want to be, truthfully. Oh. And that... And reasons like this, and you know, honestly, watching Brittany in this routine, um, she looks exhausted. Yes, she, she doesn't does. look like she's in shape for this event. And that right there, exactly, Elfie, because her body was exactly where it needed to be away from the bar. It was a perfect distance to catch that release. She just, you know, couldn't handle the force through the bottom because she looks like she's so tired. I think the Canadians marvel at what the Americans have developed in their country, uh, watching the girls come to these camps every month. That way, everyone's on the same page. They all get to watch one another. They know exactly where they are in their training. They don't have that in a country like Canada. And Brittany Rogers is trying to get to the side uh, as quickly as possible. Ellie Raceman after the vault, 15.35. So for the Americans, a terrific start here in Melbourne. Beautiful look at the city of Melbourne hosting this event, which has been around since 1998, the first time that the Pacific Rim Championships are being held in this city. Remember all the problems for China on the beam? More of them. Zhang Xichi, the youngster. <laughs> Just a baby. She's adorable. Oh. But so five gymnasts, we've had seven falls from China on the beam so far. And yet they are on top in terms of those who've gone through two events. They've got a little more than a two and a half point lead over Canada. The Americans, of course, only one event so far. So in terms of those with one event, a great start, especially for the juniors. They're having a great time as Andrea Joyce found out. So here you guys are, halfway around the world, building your international resumes. But aside from the gymnastics, Sabrina, I want to know, how cool is this? Compared to everything you've gotten to do in your life, how cool is it to be here in Australia? Well, most importantly, I just really want to do well in the competition. And it's just a great privilege to have made the team to come here in Australia. And it's fun here, right? Yeah. And, um... Other than the gymnastics, I just love to travel, and it's pretty cool visiting all these countries. And this is a very cool experience for you as well, Jordan. I mean, it seems like at 14 years old, you're too young to be making a comeback, but you are. First competition in more than a year. What are you hoping to show everyone, especially the judges? I'm just hoping to show, you know, that I've improved, you know, aside from my setback from my injury, I'm just hoping that they see that I've improved, and I'm just coming back strong, and I'm really excited to compete. I'm back, and I'm not going away. Something like that? Yeah, yeah right. And Kyle, we've been talking about the Olympic calendar and how well it worked out for all of you guys. You'll all be eligible for 2012. 
Is it hard not to think about that, the Olympics, when you're at a competition like this? Well, it, the 2012 Olympics is one of my biggest goals, and to compete here in Australia is just one big step closer to it. All right. Now, I know that you guys are hoping to leave here with medals around your neck, but I have something else for you. It's part of the education. Travel size portions of Vegemite. Do you know what Vegemite is? Okay. When you get home, look it up online, but just do me a favor. Don't eat it before the competition. I don't want to be blamed for anything, okay? okay. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, bring that Vegemite to school. Yeah for school lunch and yum, show it around, yum. right? I think Andrea's ready to go up on the bar. She's ready to compete here. You know what? Those juniors, they're so... They're so young, and yes, they're very focused, and I think you saw that in that interview because they're here on a mission. They want to prove to the world just how good they are. And here's the 13-year-old from Aliso Viejo, California, Kyla Wass. And she has beautiful lines, and this is a very interesting routine because there's really not a lot of difficulty in here. It's kind of a strategy, but there is almost no place for the judge to take pen to paper and scratch down deductions. And that's what Marta Crowley loves so much about this young gymnast is she has execution. She looked great on the international stage. The rest will come, so she thinks. Time to go have some Vegemite on the side and wait for your score now. As we move over to the vault and the young Australian, 15 years of age, Emma Collister. She's going to do a different style of vault that we've seen so far. It's called a Kasamatsu, actually, named after a, a great Japanese gymnast. Do you think she knows that? Nope. <laughs> a nice job. She's a junior athlete, and Peggy Liddick, who is running Australian gymnastics right now, says she had no expectations for this competition. It's changing of the guard time for them. Changing of the guard and learning time, 14.25 the score. And you see that execution score, a 9.25, significantly less than a point off. We haven't seen that on any of the apparatus besides vaulting so far. And back to another junior, 14-year-old Jordan Weaver. Watch this. This is really cool. Love it. Taken from men's gymnastics. That's called a Weiler kip. I don't think I've ever seen anybody on the women's side do that element. I've been so impressed with how Jordan has handled this competition. Really, it's remarkable. It's like she has never left. It's hard to believe she was out for a year. They rested her hamstring for eight months. Oh, she looks fantastic. She does. Came in talking about how strong she felt coming into the event, and now we're seeing it. Jordan Weber of the U.S. Back in Melbourne for what should be very high scores for Jordan Weber, the young American, and they are 14.8 on the uneven bars. Now to the reigning world all-around champ, Bridget Sloan, 17 years of age from Pittsburgh, Indiana. But this is the only event in which we'll see her because of that right ankle injury, which she suffered on the day she traveled to Melbourne. And after the world championships that she won, beautiful transition to the low bar. She took a break, was a 2008 Olympian and hadn't had time off. This is his, her first competition back, and that's not good. You know, Marta Caroli said that they kind of rushed in getting ready for this competition, wasn't at her peak shape, and very difficult dismount combination. A good job, but that's a fall. Do you write that off in your mind as an athlete then because of the injury, because of the rust? Yeah, no question about it. Uh, she, she's a tough competitor, and she will, she will come back and do much, much better than that in the future. And that's a tough, long trip because her event is over. Now, to the 16-year-old from Australia on the vault, here's Emily Little. And she's a first-year senior, senior, and Peggy Liddick refers to her as her long-term project. She capitalizes hugely with her power. Exactly. And that was a very good vault. 
You know, the Australians, they have really struggled over the years to come up with gymnasts that can perform vaults at that level. Here's Tom C. Sheen getting set on the floor. for the Chinese on the floor exercise receiving a low mark under 13 so they're most likely going to have to count this and at, reading between the lines I know they've had problems and mistakes but I I can tell you really like this Chinese team oh I, I do they have a lot of ability and as Elfie has mentioned there's a whole bunch more at home that are certainly competing at this exact same level they just need a little bit more time One thing that's going to really hurt this young lady with her score are the landings. No longer can the women step out of a tumbling run. They have to stick just as the men do, and she has not been sticking. But she's so darn cute. <laughs> You know, there were there were parts of that that were just adorable, the mm -hmm. choreography, right. and then there were parts that really weren't. <laughs> yeah, it didn't, it didn't, uh, the music and the choreography, she's so young, I mean, there's still a long road ahead for her in the maturity area. We've seen that look before, and a similar look on the face of Bridget Sloan, 13.65. 7.55 in execution. Ouch. Remember, that starts at a 10.0, so those are all deductions, and... USA is going to want to toss that score into the garbage here. <laughs> All right, here on the uneven bars, Rebecca Bross, the 16-year-old. And just like on vault and all her other events, she just attacks the equipment. And this routine, the way it's choreographed, it is every skill is done in combination. Like, watch this. Right into this skill gives her extra points. She wastes absolutely nothing. And this is beautiful coming up. Woo. Tell you the possibility that the team from Woga, where she trains under Valeri Lukin, that they could have three Olympic all-round champions in a row in a row. Carly Patterson, Nastia Lukin. So possible, isn't it? It is. And of course, Rebecca had the world championships sewn up. She just needed to land one more pass on floor exercise and she would have easily won the worlds in 2009. It's an excellent routine, but that small step. Now the U.S. has dominated this event. The women have won it every year since 2002 and it's shaping up that way right now in Melbourne. Just setting here in Melbourne for the 2010 edition of the Pacific Rim Gymnastics Championships. All the problems for China, and we saw just a moment ago, they've relinquished that lead. China behind Canada now, despite their problems, including an ankle injury to Brittany Rogers. The Americans, though, in a very good position. With more, here's Andrea Joyce. International gymnastics can be a pretty small world. Teodora Ungarianu is here coaching American junior Sabrina Vega. 34 years ago, Teodora was on Bella Caroli's 1976 Romanian Olympic team. Her best friend was Nadia Comaneci, and her own personal coach was Marta Caroli. Now, Teodora told me she never, ever thought that she would be side by side with Marta Caroli on the gym floor again. Her friends say that she obviously just didn't get enough of Marta the first time around. Teodora on the other hand is very serious when she talks about her admiration for Marta and the fact that she is so happy to be reunited and back on the same team. And that's an era that certainly uh, produced a lot of gymnasts around the world. Young kids watching at that time. Currently the U.S. on the beam, the 14-year-old from Carmel, New York, Sabrina Vega. You know, and a lot of years ago in the 70s, people, many, thought that Teodora was actually on par with Nadia Comaneci. 
she actually set her up mm, for I was, all of those tens. I watched them in 76 at the Olympic Games in Montreal. I was one of those 12-year-olds that said, wow, look at that team. They were exceptional on balance beam, and she's obviously done a tremendous job instilling those characteristics into Sabrina. So once again, the teams are comprised of juniors and seniors, three of each. All of these athletes on this U.S. team are eligible for the 2012 Olympics in London. They, however, cannot compete at the next World Championships. The three juniors, they're too young. Takes on the beam from China, certainly, and Canada, the U.S. Very good so far. Have not really seen any major mistakes. The only problem came from the reigning world champion in the all-around mm. on the uneven bars. Nice exercise. There are little areas, certainly, where she can improve upon, but, boy, she has taught her to be aggressive and to, to go for it. Now, first look at the 14-year-old Sabrina Vega. Meanwhile, getting ready... On bars, the 15-year-old from Queensland, Australia, and Georgia Rose Brown. And there are two former stars on the right of your screen. Alana Slater, who was on the Australian 2000 Olympic team, and Elena Zamalajakova from Russia. Two gold medals mm. at those 2000 Olympic Games. Nice to see them down there. They certainly know what they're watching. Georgia Rose Brown now on the bars. Just a junior athlete on this Aussie team, part of the new generation, rebuilding. And you know, the head coach of Australian gymnastics, a former American, Peggy Liddick, said that this is such a great opportunity for the juniors. The two best all-round gymnasts in the world are right here. She says if they don't learn lessons here, they're just not going to learn them. Very nice routine. Beautiful lines. Lovely gymnast. When you're a junior, how much do you observe and take in from the others that you're competing against? Yeah. Everything. <laughs> so that's what we have to do, right? Okay. Marta Caroli along with Sabrina Vega and 14.35, her score for the beat. Okay. She does a lot of whacking, doesn't she? <laughs> Part of the process. So from one junior... To another for the U.S., Jordan Weber getting set on the beam. And this routine is, it is stacked. Not only does she do incredibly difficult elements, but all the way at the end of a routine, she'll do the most difficult one. It's just, it's daring. That's what it is. She's an acrobat. Well, just watching her in this competition, I have to remind myself that she's actually competing as a junior. You certainly cannot read a lot from her facial expressions when she's competing. I mean, she's just does not get rattled. She's very sure of herself, extremely confident, obviously well, well trained. So remember, she's done all this stuff and now near the end of the routine. Watch this. Oh. <laughs> Picture perfect. Just the dismount. Great. Mentioned that American Cup win last year when she won it. She was the youngest in some 20 years to capture that title, maybe on her way here in Melbourne. Look at this, back with a fall. But to do it at the end of exactly. her routine, that's incredible. Most would choose to do it right off the top. She is unquestionably going to be a factor, a major one. 
all-around champion. Still out of breath. 15.20 for Jordan Weber as the Americans continue to roll. Canada now on its final rotation. Their lead dwindling as we take a look at the 17-year-old Christina Vakulik set to go on the floor. From Toronto, my hometown. Christina is coached by the 1980 Olympic all-around champion Elena Davidova, who has been in Canada for quite some time now and has done a tremendous job with this athlete. actually missed the Olympic Games because of an elbow injury and then surgery. She was away from competition for nearly a year. herself that she still had it mentally and physically and she has signed with Stanford University for the fall but hasn't given up the dream of making the 2012 Canadian Olympic team. Plans on going there maybe for a year and then trying for the Olympic team after that. Here is Larissa Miller 17 years of age from Australia from Brisbane. And she actually was seventh on this event made the finals at the world championships and you know we talked about the Americans winning that bronze medal from 2000 when the Chinese were just disqualified. Another team that was impacted significantly were, were the Australians. It was home and they ended up seventh place, which meant they didn't advance to the team finals. Head coach Peggy Lydic said it was a disastrous outcome. She said it could have changed the entire landscape of Australian gymnastics. Can't give that back. Larissa has been battling a heel injury, has had to water down routines around the arena, but not here. So she's not quite back at full strength. The uneven bars, though, her strongest event. Followed her sister to the sport when she was just five years of age. So Australia coming on here. All right, meanwhile, for the U.S., Rebecca Bross on beam. And watch this entry onto the balance beam. It's my favorite part. She just attacks. She, you know, she's on the beam and let's go. Let's get this routine done. And she's like a, a kid on a playground right here. It just keeps moving. One speed. Her most challenging element right here. Good, but a little bit of a bobble. Marta Caroli says she grew up in an Olympic champion atmosphere. The best is absolutely expected. And she has told us that she doesn't often think about winning the Olympic Games or becoming the third athlete from her own team to do so. But it's, you know, it's in the back of her mind. She actually said to me that she has dreamed of it. Literally. Literally, yes. It's the way it should be. And you know others bring it up often. Well, it's, it's impossible to escape. You walk through the doors <laughs> of her gym <laughs> and they are, the walls are adorned with those two oh. chains. Oh, wow. 
And I can't, I can't believe she didn't come off the beam right there. That foot just slipped out and the knee went down and somehow she stayed on. Still a big deduction though. It's a fall on the beam. Beautiful dismount, the hardest that there is. Oh, she's not happy. And really just the second miscue for the Americans that we've seen. So here it is, a punch front. Watch that leg, it slides out. And you know, her coach doesn't have to tell her that that's bad because she knows herself. She's very tough on her gymnastics. Disappointing 14.35 for Rebecca Bross. Back in the very busy city of Melbourne, Australia. Four million people here in the capital of Victoria. The Pacific Rim Championships. Winding down with the U.S. having taken somewhat commanding lead over 15 points ahead of China. Canada is done. Their efforts done through four rotations. That's the number. So some question as to whether it will be Australia or Canada walking away with the bronze medal here. Meanwhile, Kyla Ross of the U.S., the 13-year-old, on the floor. She is done for the day, and I'll tell you, she's not quite ready yet, but she has a tremendous amount of potential. Meanwhile, Wang Shu Shuang, a 17-year-old from China, getting ready on the vault. And it is amazing how good the Chinese have gotten on vaulting. Yeah, there was a time where we would always say, hey, they're just great on balance beam and the uneven bars, but they're starting to pick up the pace slowly on some of these events. And of course, this new generation, they need them to do just that. And if you look at Kyla Ross with a 14.15, as a mom, are you not continually blown away by the poise of 13-year-old athletes? Oh, they are spending countless hours in the gym. They learn how to work independently. They know what they need to get done. A one year older, 14-year-old, Jordan Weaver now, and, you know, if there was a criticism of Jordan in the past, it was the artistic component. But I think she's much better. You'll see.
Yeah, the maturity level alone has just blown me away. From over a year ago, she's not a little girl anymore. She's really come on strong. I, I can't believe it. She seems to have a presence and an attitude that we have not really seen in this event. Yeah, she's so comfortable, so at home. Pleasant. And remember, she's competing as a junior here. Her elements are too advanced. They are not even allowed. I'll tell you, she is the real deal. Over to Beam, and the 15-year-old who's a hometown girl from Melbourne, Amelia McGrath. And she does, watch this opening here. Beautiful hand balancing. Excellent flexibility. I love this. This was old school. Back in the yeah. day, these were things that were so... People don't take time to do mounts like this anymore, but obviously she's trying to capitalize on her flexibility and her strength there. Elfie, why don't we see them? It's just too difficult, takes too much time. It takes too much time, and they're interested in just getting on the balance beam and performing some of those higher-end uh, acrobatic skills. So, yes, the, the mounts are, have become a thing of the past. And this is, this is much too long of a wait, way too long of a wait for her first acrobatic. Which is interesting because it's a very compulsory combination that we're seeing around the world. But she's lovely up there. Yes, I, I like her a lot. Just very interesting how, how long she paused there. Of course, she is just a junior, so. We'll give her that one. Yeah. Peggy Lydic, of course, is very, very excited about this athlete. She expects her to be on the world championship team down the road. She knows that she excels on events like balance beam and floor exercise, mostly because of her beauty, her choreography. She's just a little nervous up there right now. World championships in Rotterdam in October this year. Well, she's certainly going to be a very great Australian gymnast. A little young, as we said, but you can see the makings of a little champion there. Jordan Weber all smiles right now. She should be 14.45, the score for a floor exercise. The American women looking to sweep here in Melbourne. Rebecca Bross now, the 16-year-old, with her floor exercise. And if you look at the maturity and the experience, this USA team has completely just blown away the competition. A moment ago, we saw the personality of Jordan Weber. Now a look at the focus, I think, of Rebecca Bross. Yeah, she is a very intense individual, not just in competition. They say that, well, Valeri Lukin, her coach, said that Rebecca is just all work. The wins are important, but it's another opportunity to compete on an international no. stage and send a message to the world. All of this part of the plan for the Americans, too. It's uh, come together exactly how Marta Caroli had hoped. As we take you over to the vault and Zhou Chao Hong from China. And this is actually the most difficult rated vault 
that we're seeing in the competition. Very, very hard. Straight down the middle. Yeah. Remember all those mistakes on the beam earlier in the event for China, but they're in a position to lock down second place here. Australia in that battle for the bronze medal with Canada, whose event is over. Rebecca Bloss with a 14.6. And that's going to just about do it for her as well. There's also an all-around competition. And she was overwhelmed. You could see the emotion <laughs> on yeah. her face. 15-year-old Emily Little now on beam. Peggy says that this athlete doesn't have the highest start values of her team, but what she likes is she's steady. She's a powerful gymnast. She has all the components, but she's her long-term project. So still a lot of work ahead as they get near to the world championships. Yeah, she actually said that uh, she's not that graceful and it's kind of hard to bend steel. <laughs> but they're working on it. And if anyone knows Peggy, you can oh, yes. <laughs> rest assured she is. And this type of event works well for this particular country because down the road, aside from the World Championships, they have the Commonwealth Games. Equally as important for a country like Canada and uh, Australia, New Zealand. Another opportunity to put a team together and get some experience. Yeah, solid job. Important effort. Remember, Australia trying to grab that third spot now. So Emily Little's effort on the beam complete. And Allie Raceman for the U.S., the final floor exercise. From the same gym that 2008 Olympian Alicia Sacramoni is from. And honestly, they have so many qualities that are so similar both very very powerful including alicia's old floor exercise music <laughs> yes now what she used it at the olympic games but this is what they call a, a recycled routine <laughs> will certainly please Marta Caroli, another one of her girls, doing the job, handling the pressure. And the U.S. overall, really almost a business-like approach. They came in expecting to do well, expecting to win. Not many disappointments here. Yeah, a no-nonsense competition. This is a great combination. Tumbling pass. Very difficult. <laughs> So Allie Raceman with that final job, floor Allie. exercise, 14.35. And it was a nice finish after a nice start and a nice middle, quite frankly, for the Americans. So the final standings, and Tim, 15.5, the winning margin? Yeah, that's like a baseball game where it's 21 to zip. That is gigantic. 10-run rule in Little League, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Australia able to edge out Canada for the bronze. Andrea Joyce is standing by with the winning American team right now. 
Well, it's a trifecta for the Americans, the senior all-around title, the junior all-around title, and the team title. So, Rebecca, what message do you think you guys sent the world with this dominant performance? Well, we're a strong team, and we support each other really well, and we went out there and performed like we needed to said like a true champion and Jordan this is your first competition in more than a year how important was it for you to come out and have the performance you did it was so important for me I just wanted to come back and and be strong and have a good meet and so I'm glad I did that and you juniors I mean we talked to you guys earlier and here you come into this competition and finish one two three Kyla what does this say about the future of USA women's gymnastics um, I think it says that we're all strong and very confident and that we can do our best and try our best. All right. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Clean sweep for the U.S. junior women. Great win overall for the women. The men were here as well. We'll take a look at their effort next. The Pacific Rim Championships are brought to you by Tyson Chicken Nuggets, made with 100% all-natural ingredients. By ADT Security Services, always there. And by AT&T, we think possible. Medal ceremony underway in Melbourne, the U.S. capturing the gold medal. China, the silver in Australia, able to win the bronze medal. Prior to the women's event, the men's competition took place here at the Pacific Rim Championships. It turned out, Tim, to, to be a two-team race, the Americans and the Chinese. And Steve Legendre, he got it going on floor exercise big, but uh-oh, bad. Sitting down a point off in China on parallel bars. They are unstoppable. Rotation two and a perfect, picture-perfect landing. Problems for the USA continue on pommel horse. Donnell Leva having a rough time and lots of pen to paper there. China on top. But then in rotation three, the problems start here. And the situation goes bad. The USA battles back on the still rings. A junior, CJ Maesta. He's a junior, one of the strongest kids in the competition. And watch this. This is where USA really takes off. Dylan Akers, teammate of Jonathan Horton, and once again, Steve Legendre. Look out! In rotation five, pommel horse. The Chinese are great on horse. What's going on? Danel Leva, watch this. Bam. A seven-point swing in this rotation. The junior, John Orozco from the Bronx. And then sealing the deal, Donnell Leva. Look at this. Late charge and a comeback win. Clean sweep for the Americans. For Alfie Schlegel, Tim Daggett, and Andrea Joyce, I'm Terry Gannon. So long, everybody. Guys, every